Hello everyone, today we go on an interesting topic which is mathematics in engineering. Engineering and math. Now before we go deeper into it, I would like to address something which is do you have to be good at math to be part of engineering? Well the straight answer to that is yes, you have to be good at maths. Notice I didn't say very good, I didn't say you have to be like some genius in mathematics. No, you don't need that. As far as you're good in maths, you're good to be part of engineering. Now the fact that people are asking this question shows that you know they're interested in engineering but they think their maths is going to stop them. Because the question whether you have to be good at math and engineering or not is asked by people that want to study engineering or people that are already studying engineering and they think because they are not very good at math, they're going to have you know some problems and so on. Now that is a good step in the right direction, the fact that they're asking questions. So if you find yourself in this position, know that uh, the condition, you know, your situation in mathematics can be improved. Some people blame, you know, their poor math skills on their lecturers. That might be true and that might not be the case. So what one should do is uh, you should try and, you know, consult your classmates. They can help you with mathematics if you're, if you're finding it difficult to understand some of the topics. If your mates can't help you, you can go to your seniors that have gone through, you know, the mathematics courses. If that doesn't work too, then the internet. I mean, there's no going back from there. If you are facing difficulties in mathematics and you really want to improve, you really want to be part of engineering, then just have it at the back of your mind that uh, it can be improved. You need that mindset shift from, oh, I'm not good at math, so uh, I can't pass engineering, it's going to be difficult. Change it to, okay, it can be improved, I can be better at this, and so on. That mindset shift is very critical. So whenever you go online, like, is it calculus that is giving you problem? You can always go on YouTube, and there's always going to be some Indian guy that is going to explain it to you better than your professor ever did. So just have it at the back of your mind that your math skills can be improved. I just had to get that out of the way because I noticed that a lot of people are asking this question whether they have to be good at math to be part of engineering. And this is the reason why some people don't even go into engineering at all. They think that because they are not very good at math, uh, then why, why should they be part of engineering? Then they end up going to economics, you know, history and so on. Now let's go deeper. As you know, Mathematics is critical across all the engineering disciplines. In undergraduate engineering programs, students usually take a series of mathematics courses that build upon each other and cover topics such as calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, probability, and statistics. Now, these are the main courses, these are the main topics, sorry, that people cover in their undergraduate programs while studying engineering. We can add to the list, you know, discrete mathematics and numerical methods. Well, I didn't take these. The first ones that I mentioned are the ones that are mostly taken by students. Now get this, these courses provide the mathematical foundation for understanding and analyzing engineering problems. This is why they are very important. Let's talk about some of the topics briefly. Let's start with linear algebra. Now, this is very essential for solving systems of linear equations, which arise frequently in engineering problems. They represent instances where two or more variables are unknowns and are used to describe how a system behaves. Engineers use, you know, techniques like matrix manipulation, vector spaces, you know, to analyze and solve problems such as structural analysis. This is used a lot by, you know, people that are studying civil engineering structural engineering and so on. Then we have dynamics and electric circuits. They use a lot of linear algebra for their calculations. The next we have is calculus. Calculus is fundamental in engineering for concepts like rates of change, optimization, and integration. Engineers frequently use calculus to analyze motion, optimize designs, and solve problems involving areas, volumes, and rate of change. The next one we have is differential equations. Now, these are pervasive in engineering for describing dynamic systems. 
this is used a lot, you know, for calculations in, you know, heat transfer, fluid flow, electrical circuits, and so on. Engineers use these techniques for ordinary and partial differential equations. When you go into mathematics, when you go into differential equations, you're going to know ordinary and partial differential equations. They are used to model, simulate, and analyze engineering systems. The next one is probability and statistics. Engineers use this to analyze uncertainty and variability in engineering systems. Now, these concepts are crucial for reliability analysis, risk assessment, experimental design, and quality control in engineering processes. I mean, this is where they, you know, assess how reliable a particular design is, how reliable a particular structure is. You know, this is where they carry out different calculations to know whether it's feasible, to know how long it will last, and so on. These four that I mentioned are like the main ones that keep popping up. But after them, we have, you know, like I said, numerical methods, Fourier analysis. This is also very important. It is being, you know, taught in different undergraduate programs. We have complex analysis and also discrete mathematics. Now, among the characteristics of good engineers are good math skills. Although it's not every day at your job that you'd be, you know, calculating a lot of stuff. Because now software has become an integral part of modern engineering. A lot of the complex calculations that you have to do can be done on a computer right now. But you still have to know the mathematics behind the software so that you know when it is giving you funny answers. The mathematics we study in university is just to help us lift the heavy load so that when we get to work it will be easier for us like there is this analogy i saw online where it is mentioned that someone that lifts 50 kg in the gym doesn't mean that he's going to be lifting 50 kg on a daily basis but he's lifting heavy weights so that it will be easier for him or her to lift the smaller weights you know the 20 kg and the 25 kgs that is the point. Same as in this scenario, the mass we are studying in university or the mass we studied in university is to do a lot of the heavy lifting, you know, to cover some of the complex topics so that when we get to work, we'll be able to, you know, solve the calculations that we need because we have a deeper, you know, understanding of mathematics, a deeper understanding of engineering calculations. Overall, Mathematics provides engineers with powerful tools for modeling, analyzing, you know, designing, and solving a wide range of problems encountered in engineering practice. Now, if you're finding it difficult in mathematics, you know, your courses are really troubling you, you find it challenging to go through engineering school, check out this video where I give some hacks to go about this. Thank you for watching once again.